Here we go on Fox College Sports 66 kilo. That's 145 and a half pounds. Town Ware out of State College, Pennsylvania, wrestling Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. He's in the red singlet. And Kerry Colat in the blue singlet. I'm gonna let you tell us about Kerry Colat. Well, what is there to say that hasn't already been said about Kerry Colat? 37 years old, turns 38 next month. He's 10 years older than four-time All-American Tion Ware. Olympian, three-time World Cup champion, won the la last one the Open in 2000. Four-time All-American, two-time national champ for Lock Haven. This guy was wrestling in the late 90s. I mean, his style, everything about him coming out of Pennsylvania before he went to Penn State, then to Lock Haven. Kerry Colat is a legend. He's an icon in this sport. And, you know, like me and many of the other fans here that maybe not have had a chance to see Colat in his prime, this is a real treat. And it's got Tion Ware. A guy who went from Greco now over to freestyle, wrestled at Oklahoma for Jack Spates as a two-time NCAA champion and a four-time All-American. Not what you expected to see here in the finals. He upended last year's world team of Brent Metcalf in the quarterfinals. And the legend of Kerry Colad's Gumby Knee has been ever-present here in this tournament so far. It has. He's fought his way out with that flexible knee, as you just mentioned. You referred to it as the Gumby Knee, but we're talking about flexibility here and literally earned his way into this championship bout right here. He had to go through the challenge tournament. He wasn't a top eight seed. Was not, so he had no. to wrestle yesterday just to get into the top eight to come in blind draw and gets the number three seed. Joe Johnston beats him, beats Justin Perch, then beats Josh Chirella. And now he's got Tion Ware. And he also has no points, but Ware has no points in this, the first period. We dip down to 20 seconds remaining in the opening stanza here at 66 kilos. Colat was second in the 1997 World Championship, so do the math, 14 years ago, when he was 23, was the best in the world, and they took it from him that year. They, they, they took that away from him. He has gone he's through been some, bitter about that ever since. He has gone through some controversy, and obviously he's got some unfinished business as we come down to the end of the first period with a 0-0 zero zero tie. Tion Ware is going to actually make the draw, the blind draw, out of the ball bag. And whatever color comes up, that's who's going to initiate the single leg. And it's Kerry Colat. Wow. So it's been blue three times so far. We'll keep track of that. At one point last year at the World Team Trials, there was 10 straight ball draws that came out, I believe, red, and they dumped them both out to show there was a blue one in that bag. But these are blind draws, we might add, Jason. Hey, it's the chances of that are about as good as hitting all 20 numbers on a Kino. Colad in on the single leg, but... Attention red here, so they Tion get proper Ware starting position for Ware. One more, and then it's a caution. Tion Ware has to present that leg in order for Colat to get the clinch, then the whistle blows. I got a score here, Colat with the leg. Drives to the hips. Has it been called yet? No. Yes, he does. He now gets called, he gets the confirmation. There it is, because he dropped the to the down. knee. Dropped to the knee, the third supporting point. Even if it's momentary. You know, all fours, you're fine, but as soon as a knee, an elbow, or a head hits that mat, that's that third supporting point. And that's that third supporting point. So right now, Kerry Colat wins it on the leg clinch. He's two minutes away from winning a national championship, something he hadn't done since 2000. And it's absolutely phenomenal. To put this in perspective, Jason, he won the 1998 Goodwill Games. Now, how long has it been well, since we've had that, the that Goodwill event, Games? That event's not around anymore. Unfortunately, it was it, a great event. It's not around, but Kerry Colat is as we get the second period underway. Front headlock roll through by Ware. Colat's going to try to counter here, but He's he in trouble. He's in trouble. Nice move by Ware. So it's two and one there. So he got the two on the exposure and the one for the hold for five seconds. You keep your opponent in danger. Five, four. Very similar to just near fall points of the five count in the college game and the high school game. A five count holding your opponent in danger gives you an extra point. So it's four now. Nothing. Four nothing. They give him three on the uh, the points and then one for the hold. So a 4-0 lead for Tion Ware. Tion Ware comes out with a vengeance here to start the second period. He had a four to nothing lead as you just went through it in the first 25 seconds of the second period. Now the question, Van, is Colak going to try to recover that four points in this second period and win it clean, or is he going to just kind of coast and try to? get this thing won in the third period. You never kind of know what a wrestler's mentality is. A lot of us hate to lose anyway, but uh, I don't know, if you're a guy like Kerry Colot, you're 37 out there, I think he's gonna battle for every point, every score. Ware comes in on the leg, but Colot 
Colette backs away quickly. Now Ware's back into the leg again, picks up the one-point takedown. It's five to nothing right now. Tian Ware here in the second period. First period went to Colette. Well, it's interesting enough, too, is Tian Ware representing the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, and he's an assistant coach at Lock Haven. Gary Colat started his career at Penn State as a Nittany Lion, finished his career at Lock Haven. So you, you have you have that keystone rivalry out there. Colot gets active right now, but we're under 30 seconds to go here in the second period. Where can you step out, give up a point, still in a good position with a five to nothing lead right now? What's interesting is we had the Greco-Roman wrestlers that were never state champions, and Jeremiah Davis and Joe Betterman. Now we have two wrestlers that were undefeated high school four-time state champions. Not one, but two, both of these guys were. And Oklahoma and Pennsylvania, no less. Two of the most deep-rooted wrestling tradition states in the country. As the second period comes to an end, won by Tion Ware by the score of five to nothing, evens things out at one period apiece. And the Tion Ware we saw, Jason, in the second period was a vengeful Tion Ware. I think he laid back a little bit perhaps in the first period, but in the second period, he got on the attack, and you know what, it really went to his favor. Oh yeah, scored that quick move right off the bat and put Cole out in danger, got, got him in a position where he was basically exposing his back on that front headlock roll through, but Cole could not do anything to counter it, so he had the ability, now Tion Ware kind of maybe smelling blood here, realizing that he can go with this guy. He's not in awe of him. Now, Colat, now both these guys coming right after and picking up the pace here. In the final two minutes, a little boot scoot attempt by Colat can't quite even get through as he kicks his leg through. This is going to be a great period of wrestling oh, right here. Oh, they're getting after it, Van Stokes. They are. It is all on the line right here in this third and final determining period for 66 kilogram national championship here in freestyle from Public Hall in Cleveland. You know, Kerry Colat's been on this in the wrestling world for a long time. There's the drive, oh. the push out, one point for Kerry Colat. So using that adv advantage, lowers his head, hits that sweep, realizing where the mat area was. And these weren't the rules the last time Colat was really a force in wrestling. No, but the mat awareness shown by Kerry Colat on the push out right there gives him a one point lead right now. In 1989, 89, mind you, Kerry Colat won the Cadet, Cadet World Championships. But here's the neat thing about it. He looks good. It's not just a case of Kerry Colot returning. He is returning in shape and really wrestling well. When Colat won the Cadet Worlds, Tion Ware was six years old. That's, that's a tough one. That is a tough one to put in perspective right now. Well, Probably especially if you're Tion Ware. 40 seconds remaining here. Colat with a one point lead right now. At, well, here's the funny thing. The next match we're going to see with Aaron Claudio and Adeline Gray in women's freestyle, they were one and two when Colat won the Cadet World. So 25 to go. Colat with that one point lead by virtue of that early push out. Now, where? Going to do the same thing. Colat stepping around. Where on the attack? The step out. Where picks up the point? On the push out. 13 seconds remaining. Where picks up the point? On the push out, he's got the last activity point. Each point scored with step outs here in the third period. Oh, Colette. he's in on the leg and time Can is going to run no, out. No, he did not get it. Colat on the attack, oh, but time clicked away. He was close. He was close to the takedown, but Ware fought him off. And Tion Ware, in a hard fought match, wins the national title. And the crowd here giving Tion and uh, Kerry Cole had a great ovation. You know, when we went, we're seeing one of the all-time greats here on the mat. Obviously not the performance Kerry Cole had used to, but just congratulations to Tion Ware for coming through, beating Brent Metcalf, beating Kerry Cole at coming through, it, it's, it's about Tion Ware. It, it came within seconds, did Kerry Colot, of winning the first national title in 11 years. He had three national titles, was on the verge of winning one, but Tion Ware, Jason, he stepped it up and came away with the gold medal.